I am a change maker. I'm a change maker. I am a change maker. I am a change maker. I am a change maker. I use my voice and skills in raising awareness on social issues. I am determined to protect the health of girls and women. I commit to leading in community engagement. I am changing the lives of indigenous women and girls in my community. I would like to make an impact on gender equality and climate change. I am working to accelerate the sustainable development goals. We want to create voices for the marginalized communities. I use my platform as a journalist to keep both public and private institutions accountable. I help the many journalists and other human rights defenders to stay connected online. I am working for capacity building of journalists to write and report. I believe in empowering individuals to take climate action. If no one ever tries to change things, Things simply are never going to change. I am a change maker. I'm a change maker. I am a change maker. Welcome to our Meet the Change Makers session. The Change Makers program was a five week training program for journalists and advocates from across the Sub Saharan and Asia Pacific region, a program that focused on innovation and collaboration. I'm privileged to be joined by four of our participants today. The journalists were trained in best practice reporting and fairness and balance, while the advocates received training on how to deliver clear and compelling messages to the media. We provided expert briefings on topics such as climate change and digital rights, and also skills labs on multimedia production and proposal writing. But at the heart of this program lay solutions journalism. Journalists and advocates worked together to tell stories Stories that not only focused on the problems facing society, but on what created these problems and also where successful interventions could potentially be used and transferred to other areas. Our journalists and advocates are with us today to share their stories of collaboration. But without further ado, I'd like to hand over to them to introduce themselves. Rita. Hi everyone, my name is Rita Utu. I'm a Nigerian a passionate agriculturist and an advocate. I am the CEO of Bow Heaven Farms. Bow Heaven Farms is an integrated farm in Nigeria. We provide opportunities for women to earn hunger and rice. We use storytelling, advocacy and arts to promote nutrition and women's empowerment. So far, we've empowered more than 20,000 women in Nigeria with an nutritious meal. Chicha. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Chitra Ayer and I'm a change maker from India. I'm the founder of uh, Space to Grow, uh, a social impact and we call ourselves an unconsulting organization because what we dream of achieving, which is the real impact that we aspire is reflected in the nature of the work that we do. Uh, we work in the areas of anti-human trafficking, child protection, inclusive education and livelihoods. We create sustainable impact by acting as a catalyst and creating solutions for complex social problems with all the stakeholders. Personally, as a woman and as a mother, I believe that every child has a right to be safe and protected to fulfill their hopes and aspirations. And one of my key passions is making children in this hyper-connected digital world absolutely safe, recognizing that digital access is liberating and full of opportunities. Thank you, Chitra. And Ankita, over to you. Thank you, Melanie. I am Ankita Anand. I'm based in Delhi, India. I am a journalist and also an editor with Unbiased News, which is a global virtual newsroom focusing mm -hmm. on diversity in the media. And one of the ways we do it is by placing special emphasis on solutions journalism, which I'm quite passionate about because uh, it re restores agency to people rather than just calling them victims. It connects communities through common solutions. It shows the competence and the creativity that people have. And it works wonders for the mental health of journalists. So what's not to like? Thank you, Ankita. <laughs> Great, Kopi and Rita, we'd love to hear more about your collaboration. Rita, could you tell us a bit about the intervention, the project that you are working on? Okay, the project I'm working on is called Nutritious Meal, Nutri Meal. And like we know, hunger has a woman's face. And 
nutrition is central to women empowerment. That's why it's bridge the gap. Um, I decided to get women involved. Our nutrient meal is fortified gary that has vitamins and minerals called the uh, gay soil. Gay soil so far it's used at a Charles Walker orphanage home to feed the uh, um, children because it helps children in their immune system. So for the collaboration with Kofi, we are working on a beautiful story to see how we can scale up and replicate a nutri meal in Ghana and also write on the impact that um, women are facing in climate change here as far as in Nigeria. Super, thank you, Rita. Kofi, as a journalist from Ghana, could you explain a little bit more how you are collaborating with Rita in Nigeria? Kofi, I'm really, really sorry. We can't seem to hear you quite clearly. Is your mic on properly? Sorry, Kofi, but I think I'll go ahead and just explain a little bit more about that collaboration in the meantime. Uh, Kofi, as a journalist from Ghana, was very taken with uh, Rita's Nutrimeal intervention and has thought um, that this could actually solve a number of the food security issues facing Ghanaian societies and communities. So Kofi is working on a story to show how Rita's project in Nigeria could be used as well in Ghana. Sorry about that, Kofi. Thank you, both of you. Now, as we know, inclusive and sustainable societies need to protect, need to ensure that the vulnerable are safe. So I'd like to move now to Chitra and Ankita and ask you, please, Chitra, could you explain the project that you are working on? Thank you so much, uh, Melanie, for that. Uh, I think uh, even before I start, I just want to say I believe that journalism is not just reporting the facts, uh, but it's also about helping the world discover them. Also to throw some light in the unlit corners of the society. And uh, it's just been an amazing experience to collaborate with Ankita. Uh, thanks to the Changemakers cohort, uh, getting into even an orbit of journalists like her, who are equally passionate about the subject was absolutely refreshing and encouraging. Uh, in my own line of work, there are lots of stories to tell and uh, these stories make a huge impact. Uh, the collaborative work that we're doing is around the massive growth of usage of online learning platforms and the impact that it has on children. Uh, just to give you a context to this, uh, in India, one in three children are using the internet and the edtech space caters to over 90 million children. And with the pandemic, uh, this is just increased and exploded. But at the same time, uh, the cyber tip line report in 2019 mentions approximately 2 million cases of online child sexual abuse. And globally, this is indifferent. And the evidence suggests that minimum 10 seconds to 10 days is all it takes for predator to, predators to really groom children in the online space. And if we have to just put all of this together, it's clear that online presence and children vulnerability are absolutely highly positively correlated. And our work at space to grow uh, during these times of COVID highlighted this reality and the extent of the risks that these uh, children face. This was one of our very key initiative. And the question was always around how can we make children safe in the learning spaces? And how do we make sure that learning platforms invest in child safety? And that's how uh, you know, we designed a solution, a marquee client, uh, Vedantu Innovations, which is one of the edtech companies, a unicorn today in the country, that has over 1 million registration. And the solution revolved around uh, a 360 degree engagement, where the partnership was to make the product safe, make all stakeholders aware of the risks, create clear policies and redressal systems, and also engage with the government uh, for broader policy changes. And uh, this is the story uh, that Ankita is working on. Uh, the collaboration is through this story, how can we really showcase challenges and solution to amplify the impact across the online learning space? And the single vision of all of this is, how do we make digital safety a fundamental right for every child? Thank you, Chitra. And Keita, could you elaborate a little bit more about how you as a journalist are working with Chitra? As a journalist, I think, Melanie, uh, you know this already, that we are living in a time where there's a lot of mistrust 
even suspicion around media persons and people do not open up easily. They don't know what you're up to, what is going to be the outcome of uh, the interview. So what Shaltra helped me do because of her extensive work in this area uh, was to connect me to people who could be really valuable sources. And because as a media advocate, Chitra already had this kind of, uh, as an unconsulting, unconsulting <coughs> she already had a relationship with them. So there was a trust transference from Chitra to me because they had worked with her. They knew what her work was about. So when Chitra was bringing someone on board to speak to them, they could speak to me very freely. And it led to a much richer report, which would have been difficult otherwise. So it was really beneficial to me. That's fantastic to hear. And I believe, Kofi, you are back with us and I'm hoping we can hear you now. So we'd love to hear in your own words how your collaboration with Rita is going, please, Kofi. So Rita is sharing all the details of her project and the interest is to tell the story of the Nutrimel to the Ghanaian audience with the intent of uh, taking lessons on how uh, the biofortification of staple food crops can be factored into uh, Ghana's uh, school feeding program. And the goal is to use our story to help improve child health, also help increase school enrollment, and most essentially help improve the income levels of farmers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kofi. Now we have some time and I know that you'd love to hear a bit more about each other's projects. So Rita, is there anything you would like to ask Chitra and Ankita? Yes, okay, yeah, Chitra, my question is, um, for the children in rural areas, which they don't have access to the internet, how do you get to them? Good question. Thank you so much uh, for the question. And uh, Melanie, this is amazing to really understand each other uh, during this uh, session. Uh, so uh, Rita, I mean, it's absolutely true. Uh, and the work that we've been doing, what we've been seeing is the digital divide is extensive. Uh, and uh, even today, uh, whether if I have to talk about some statistics in India, over 70% of the children during the times of pandemic have not been able to access online education because of digital divide. But the dichotomy in all of this, which I see and which as an organization we keep feeling is, if that's the case, then why is the global evidence and uh, country evidence talking about high level of internet usage by children? And that too in the age groups of five to 11 years. So somewhere the clarity that comes to all of this is that probably they don't have full-time digital access to uh, you know, learning platforms or education. But when their parents come back or peers or neighbors, or we don't even know if there are predators who have those kind of access and they enable these to uh, you know, give it to these children because of which access is happening. Uh, so the whole idea is that two things. One uh, is even when we have to build this digital divide, it's important that we integrate safety into it while making this access happen to children primarily because uh, these children will be far more vulnerable than any kind of children that we're gonna be talking about because there's already lacks of a lack of accessibility. So the way we would want to do that is through community level awareness, through uh, community level institutions who already exist and train them and deliver these training programs so that the level of preparedness is higher even before this dig digital divide gets built. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chitra. Um, I have a follow up question um, based on Rita's question. And, and you mentioned awareness raising um, programs at community level. Um, how would you see the media being able to assist you with that? It can be a huge level of uh, support. And if I have to look at media, not just as, uh, you know, uh, you know, press, but also if I have to look at uh, TV, if we have to look at, uh, you know, different forms of media, I think uh, one way in which it's really helped some of the work that we have done in the past is that a video of a survivor who has actually been able to overcome uh, you know, uh, her issues and really be rehabilitated and really come up to the level where she's able to become the voice of her own uh, you know, set of peers 
you know, using such media forms and training, uh, you know, people in the communities has a huge impact. Uh, the other way in which media can really help is really cover these stories, uh, cover stories of uh, communities and how behavior change is happening and that leading to prevention and leading to uh, resilient communities. So those are some of the ways, Mel, that we can really look at, uh, you know, media playing a very significant uh, role in this. Thank you very much, Chitra. Ankita, um, how do you see your role going forward in promoting the work that Chitra is doing? Uh, like I said, Melanie, the first thing that has really been helpful is her acting as a bridge between me as a journalist and the communities and the stakeholders she's working with. So I hope that once the story is out quite soon, uh, people will realize that no matter how proficient a child is in using technology, it, it could be a whiz kid, but it doesn't mean that as children, they're not vulnerable uh, to abuse, to trolling. And I think parents and families tend to look at only social media as a threat. And if they're on an ed tech, they feel like, okay, the child is safe because this is about education, which is not true as I learned uh, from Chitra. Uh, so I hope that this, uh, this message goes out after our collaboration is over that, at least for the time being, if, when it's over, uh, people realize that uh, tech space can be possibly as prone to bullying or abuse as a school playground and you need to be alert and in constant communication with your child. The other thing I hope uh, companies take from this is uh, it's your primary responsibility to ensure every child's safety. It's not just the tech part that you have to take care of. You also have to look at how it's affecting a child, the psychology of the child, the family they come from, what kind of counseling and support they might need. So it's something they have to offer as a mandate, it cannot just be a perk that they may or may not offer to their users. And now they can't say that it's impossible because someone is already doing it and you can look at that solution as a model and replicate it. Great, thank you so much, Ankita. Right, I'm sure you have a question to put to Rita and Kofi. Um, can I ask you if there's something you'd like to ask them a bit more about their work? I actually wanted to ask Rita about something. Uh, Rita, you said that you work uh, to provide nutritious meals to women. And I was thinking, uh, sometimes I'm a fussy eater, and I was thinking that people have really specific tastes around food. They are set in their habits. So was there a challenge ever when you tried to provide this to your communities and they felt like, we don't like this because we are not used to it? Yes, at first it was really, really difficult because the dairy that we grow in Nigeria doesn't have vitamins and minerals. So we really had to do a lot of work. We had to use the media. We had to do a lot of workshops. We had to do a lot of seminars. And then in partnership with the, uh, one of our partners, uh, Harvest Plus, they came in and then they helped in speaking with the women farmers, how to grow this cassava because the cassava is bar fortified with vitamins and minerals. And then this really helped us a lot. And right now, Charles Walker Foundation is using the nutrient, which is called gay. So it's a mixture of agave, soybean, which is very good for children. And it's using that to feed up to 56 um, children in the orphanage home. So with that, it's the challenge was over. But right now we are also going to rural areas because most of the farmers in the rural areas don't have access to technology. So with the radio now, we speak every day, informing them why they should eat above 45 years because it has vitamins and minerals, it is good for the body systems, it's good for their sight and all of that. So with that, a partnership is very easy. Thank you so much, Rita. I have just a quick follow-up question. You mentioned women farmers, and this is an area of the work that you're involved in that we haven't touched on yet. Could you tell us a little bit more why you are so passionate about training female farmers? Yes, you know, um, women, we are the center of uh, nutrition at home. And the 60% of the workforce in agriculture is done by women. So with all of this, we yet we still face so many challenges, and most especially I'm a woman. 
So the passion is there. And I know that when a woman is empowered, the whole community is empowered. And when she has money, she puts back the money into her business. So that's why where the passion comes from. And uh, so far, I'm working hard to speak with the House of Assembly member here, how we can push young girls to have a career in agriculture. Also making it also for children to have interest where we can celebrate agricultural day in both primary school and secondary school. This will help to, due to most especially we have the children know where their food comes from. Thanks very much, Rita. Kofi, could I put a question to you as a journalist from Ghana and as a man? Um, what about Rita's work with female farmers? Do you think that there may be a story that's worth pursuing in Ghana on that? I'm so sorry, Kofi, we seem to have lost your communications again. Can you just quickly test your mic? Uh, alas, it's still not working, but we will come back to you on that if you don't mind. Great. Um, right, I would very much like to ask each of our panelists if they could tell us what the great takeaways were, or maybe not so great, but the takeaways that they recall most from the program that they have gone through. Chicha, can we go to you first, please? Thanks, Mel, for that question. Uh, I think the most important thing has been uh, experiential learning. Uh, I think I, I just keep wishing that, uh, you know, experiential learning was the only way that we were taught forever, because there's so much to learn together and across regions. So I think that's been an amazing, uh, you know, experience. And one really uh, big takeaway has been uh, the reiteration that uh, the only way one can influence or inspire is when one uh, is able to live one's belief come hell or high water. And I think uh, that's something that I take away from uh, the Change Makers program. And I just uh, really believe that we'll continue to tow that vision and we'll continue to walk the talk. Great, I certainly hope so too. Kofi, your comms are back. Can we go over to you? <laughs> okay, so I'll wrap up with uh, the thought uh, engaging Rita as well. I think one of the important areas she uh, spoke about was um, women in farming. And I made mention of the fact that the interest area is income levels of farmers. And in this aspect, the women uh, come in very important. And that is one aspect that we'll be looking at under her initiative. The, the beauty of working with people from diverse backgrounds, I must say, um, has really helped to, to, for me to better understand the importance of working with the rest. That's the media, working with activists to, to really make that important change in, in our communities. Thanks, Kopi. Just a quick follow-up question um, to you as well. As an experienced journalist and a journalist who often writes articles about climate change and inclusive societies, um, could you tell us why you think Solutions Journalism is a significant program, a significant development, why you will focus on that? Certainly, I will choose um, Solutions Journalism, especially in this part of our world, a developing economy like Ghana or other African and Asian countries where we need the requisite information for people to be able to change their lives and their communities. So Lucy Journalism is the solution to addressing the basic um, issues of communities. We cannot be telling stories without putting the people within the stories and that's Lucy Journalism. What are the critical things individuals and groups are doing that can transform lives, that can impact on women, that can impact on children, that can impact on the vulnerable in society. And that is solution journalism. So I believe this is the way to go if media is to be impactful in society. Thank you very much, Kofi. Um, Ankita, let's move over to you. What is your takeaway from the Changemakers program? One huge takeaway is that collaborations are really beneficial. They just make our job so much easier. So that's, that's really important for me. The other thing is, uh, for me, it has reaffirmed the importance of solutions journalism. Uh, there's a great myth in a lot of media people that when we talk about solutions journalism, we are talking about ignoring the issues. 
we are talking about going pro system pro establishment pro institutions which is completely uh, completely wrong you actually talk of solutions because you acknowledge that there is a problem number one number two an essential part of solutions journalism is that you have to talk of limitations and challenges so it's not all hunky dory it's not like everything is perfect but what uh, we managed to do through solutions journalism is is to show what people are capable of i'd read somewhere that i may not be able to control what happens to me but i choose not to be reduced by it for me that is the essence of solutions journalism that in the most difficult of circumstances people communities uh, small groups and organizations they are really trying to come up with solutions and we need to look at that we need to learn from that thank you so much ankita and rita can we go over to you what is your takeaway from the change makers program yes um to me i feel that uh, an inclusive society is possible um if we are valued irrespective of our class our age our gender and sexuality and for that to be done we just have to do collective power join hands together and then order we have to work in partnership with journalists promote gender equality and how women can be involved in agriculture and then we will accomplish our goal thank you so much right i think our training during the program to advise everyone to get to the point quickly and be as clear and succinct as possible was perhaps a little too good because we still have some time left so i would very much like to go around our panelists and ask them to make a statement why are you passionate about what you do chitra can we go to you first please yeah i think i'm passionate about what i do is because i know there's always a solution to complex problems and uh, i think there have to be people who continue to toe that line and are able to discover those solutions like i keep telling everybody that it's been over 20 years in the development sector and i haven't been disillusioned yet because at some point in time uh, you know it's always been that the path has always had collaborative approaches people and the right kind of uh, partnerships which have created solution for complex problems and i think uh, today it's very very important especially with children women and uh, the issues like human trafficking you will always have to have change makers and i think uh, would definitely want to be that change maker and continue to be that fabulous thank you chitra and kita over to you i'm passionate about what i do because when i do solution journalism i am humbled constantly they're all change agents they're all resilient intelligent innovative creative uh, and they have a wealth of knowledge to distribute which we must take for, uh, take from and learn from and i feel like i need to do more of it to show that how every person is capable of change and uh, how we must not slot them only as victims and uh, ignore their news as uh, you know because of compassion fatigue or just think of them as worthy of pity but also really respect respect their actions in in saving their communities from crises Thank you, Ankita. Kofi, over to you. Okay, um, I'll um, speak from the perspective of the just ended COP twenty six. Um, one of my areas of passion is climate reporting, and I'm passionate about what I do, basically because of the fact that climate change affects everyone. And, and as a media person, as a journalist, I believe. i have the responsibility to highlight the issues of the impact of the changing climate and how our inability to take to take action is going to affect not only my community but the globe of the world as a whole and for me i believe there is that passion to make sure that everything you write or your report really pricks the conscience of not only policy makers at the average person to appreciate the need that collectively we can do something to reverse or to um adapt to the the realities of the climate change and i believe this is something that um we should all assume our thinking to that 
we need to be passionate about the things that impact not only yourself, but society as a whole. Thank you, Kofi. And Rita, over to you. What yes. drives your passion? I always love this question. I'm passionate about what I do as a farmer because you provide nutritious meal for everyone, regardless of your age, your gender, your sexuality, everybody must eat. So the joy of placing food on the table for everyone is what makes me happy. And you know, there is no future without agriculture and there is no agriculture without women. So women, we are the future. Thank you so much, Rita. Well, it has been a real privilege being joined by the four of you today. And I, for one, am certainly looking forward to seeing the stories that Kofi and Ankita are going to produce. And I wish you, Chitra and Rita, all the very best in your intervention programs. Thank you so much for participating in Changemakers and also for being present today. Go well. <laughs>